Nothing Nowhere has dropped his newest album, Void Eternal. If you don't count Dead Lakes as post-hardcore, this is the most definitive post-hardcore album I've heard in a long time. You call and this post-hardcore? I would say so. What would you call this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, with Jacob, here. I'm with Jacob here. I don't know it what is, to call this. It is somewhere between post-hardcore, metalcore, and emo. Maybe we call it emo-core? <laughs> like, I, I don't really know what to call it. This this occupies the same space as the death of peace of mind and obsidian by north lane for me this is that definitive album that i mentioned earlier i think this is going to absolutely kill a lot of other albums in the scene moving forward this is a definitive album and i want to take that statement and i want to sit with it and i want to see how you guys are feeling about it i i don't think so okay contrary to me why not i don't know it, it... It, to me, with my minimal nothing nowhere experience, <laughs> it, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't get me emotionally. Honestly, I feel like it's lacking emotion, which I would disagree on songs like Cyanide and. Mm. And Venom and Memory Fracture. Those are my three favorite songs, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Funny you mentioned that because Venom and Memory Fracture are the only two songs in this album that I didn't add to my playlist. I added the entire first, like, what, nine, ten songs of this album up until the Jake added the Will Ramos song. Everybody, I did. Everybody, I initially initially left it out. I initially left it out, but. After listening to it again, I added it back. I added it into the playlist, and it has stayed in the playlist. I don't I love like... the song, but it's in the playlist still, so it's the closest you I... to me enjoying Lorna Shore, I guess. This is so fucking funny, because that's my least favorite song in the album. Oh. And it's not even close, and so it's so funny that that's one that Jake has in his playlist. I don't. Or that you, even you, objecting to it, Jacob. That I, feels I, very backwards. I like, I like Tragedy. I think it's, I think I would, I'd place it like number four or five. Here's the thing for me. I, if I wasn't adding each song to my playlist as I was listening to the album, by the time I get to the end of the album, I don't think I would have remembered a single song that I actually enjoyed. Because a lot of this album feels like it all sounds very similar to me. And there are definitely some differences on it. Like, shout out Thirst for Violence. That's uh, Suicide Pact and Thirst <laughs> yeah. for Violence are my two favorites on here by far. And Thirst for Violence definitely stands out. But if you told me to tell you, like, I'd, tell me tell me something different between Eraser, Chroma Killer, and Anxiety, and I, I would struggle. Or, like, I'd... find something different between Psycho, Psychiatry, and Fortune Teller, and I would struggle. Like, I, I can't think... tell you much about any of those songs. I think it's really interesting that nothing nowhere somehow chose every all the features almost except maybe the will ramos one all features on with bands i couldn't care less for <laughs> for the most part or no, let's not say couldn't care less for i'm gonna say i'm indifferent on mm. yeah like see you space cowboy silverstein Fall Out Boy, I guess. Uh, Static Dress, Senses Fail, Under Oath, Lorna Shore. It's it's like... The Silverstein feature in Thirst for Violence, I think, is great. And the Freddy Dread feature, too. Mm. It surprisingly works. Yeah, I, I, I think this is an interesting album. It's, it's weird. Weird is a very good way to put it. Yeah. I think that in the same way... And I mentioned this earlier. I think Obsidian defined prog metalcore or that kind of in-between genre of metalcore and whatever the fuck you want to call it for the the year, the decade to come. And I think that this, in a way, has kind of defined post-hardcore for a year to come or for the years to come. And and I think it's because this album, as somebody with a lot of nothing, nowhere experience, 
is very definitively nothing nowhere in that even if it's a complete stylistic switch up from something that he dropped four years ago, I can still feel his artistic integrity in this album. And he's managed to take parts of emo rap and convert them into post hardcore and metalcore mm. in a yeah. way that's so, even if I don't love them, it's interesting. Like, don't get me wrong. I've heard this yeah. album probably four times all the way through. The songs that I love off this album, I could not distinguish them to you for the life of me. Yeah. Gun to my head, I'm fucked. But I think that when I listen to this album on a track by track basis, I listen to it and I go, this is so unique. This is so different. This is nothing nowhere, but brought to some cross genre magnificence that I'm forgetting about. It's it's an enigma of an album. And in saying that, I think that because he's managed to blend so many aspects of the genre that it's trying to be with his own style and the emo rap blend, we are going to see a lot of albums in the next two, three years come out with aspects of this and look back on this album more fondly than we are right now. I think that given three to four years from now, we take artists like Silverstein, a lot of prominent post-hardcore artists, and they're going to take notes from this. And we're going to be able to take a song and say, okay, this sounds like there's for violence. Or this sounds like tragedy, or this sounds like Chroma Killer. Chroma Killer, by the way, being my absolute favorite song of the album. Fucking phenomenal. And Nothing Nowhere has managed better than I think any other artist in the scene has to take his pre existing style and apply it in a way that transitions perfectly over to the metal side of the scene. There is no artist that comes to mind not garden not anybody else in that emo rap sector of the scene that has managed to do this so perfectly and a couple of years from now we're going to be talking about this i have absolutely zeroed out in my mind that we're going to be talking about this album as, uh, in reference to big name artists that we normally talk about that are going to be dropping new material that base themselves off of this nothing nowhere album and to me it's incredible, even if I don't think this is going to end up in my top 10 at the end of the year, to experience an album like that in real time and be able to say, I was there. Same way that we felt mm. last year with The Death of Peace of Mind, even if the album isn't nearly as good <laughs> as The Death of Peace of Mind was, that I think the scene is in a renaissance, and I think that this album, among many, many others, is a perfect example of that. I, I can't wait to see where it is a couple of years from now. I I kind of agree with you there. I I I hope this album pushes someone like like Garden or to collab with someone who he like Garden has a scene background. Like it it could if I hope it pushes him or someone like him to genre bend something like this. Absolutely. Randomly spitballing, but I would love to see Grandson make a metalcore album. Honestly, me too. That could be sleep. Actually, get me a Grandson featuring Nothing Nowhere song, or the other way around, Nothing Nowhere featuring Grandson. That shit would go hard. I got a question, though. Do you think Nothing Nowhere could have pulled this off without the features? Yes. I agree. I don't know if as successfully, but yes. I, I, I think it, even I think yeah. if you remove half of the features, this album still has a very strong identity. I think that the features sell the transition over into the scene. Yes, I think, I think that's the point. Yeah. You attach a bunch of names to it. That gets people paying attention to it. Yes. Absolutely. And I think that that's crucial to selling your transition over from one of the most prominent emo rap artists in the entire genre to somebody who can pull off whatever blurry line that him and time the valuator <laughs> do between post hardcore and metalcore. Hello. I'm, I'm seeing him in three weeks with wage war with this album. That bill makes a lot more sense. Yeah. That. So I guess entirely on, well, not entirely, but related to maybe a comment conversations ago justin did you get the chance to listen to this album a little bit didn't save anything 
I would challenge you to listen to all of this and see how you feel. Because I think that truly, if nothing else, this feels like time to evaluate her on crack. <laughs> like, really? I, would I don't say so. see it. I don't I, see it. I, I would say... I would say the clean. I, I don't know them that. well enough to. Uh, I would say this feels like some of the best parts of Time the Evaluator merged with the best parts of post hardcore as a genre with a little bit of metalcore flair on some of the songs. But yeah, this is this album is something special, and I think that even if I don't same same as I felt with Obsidian by Northlane, I don't. Feel I feel higher than I do, or I feel higher on this than I do on Obsidian. Overall, I think I can appreciate this a lot more as something that is going to define the scene moving forward in the I, next ten years. You know what? After hearing you, after hearing you say, say I I agree. This is like a stepping stone. Yeah, for the scene, something even to build off of. Yeah, even if this isn't, I, I think it's a great album. I think for a lot of people, it may not be a great album because there's a lot going on here and a lot of experimentation and nothing nowhere is finding his footing. I think that not only are we going to see a lot of artists build off of the sound, we were going to see nothing nowhere also improve off of this album. And I think that 2023, 2024, we might have nothing nowhere album of the year in contention solely off the fact that he has such a strong understanding of the scene proven in just this one album, which is a complete genre switch. 2024 is going to be unreal for Nothing Nowhere, and I can't wait to see what he brings, because this album truly is, if nothing else, something special to bring to the scene to propel himself and a lot of other artists forward. 